Howdy guys, welcome back to Life of Clay for another sculpting video and also welcome to all our new viewers out there. This is Kenji, your sculptor and today I will be making the 5th tarantula sculpture here in my channel. The Antilles Pinto Tarantula, Caribena Versicolor. But before we begin, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell icon so you won't miss out any of my sculpting videos in the future. Now, come bring the clay on and let's get started. First, let's make the armature for its abdomen and prosoma. And I'm gonna use this 3mm aluminum wire which I apply little amount of epoxy on the tip and cover it with aluminum foil to bulk it up into oval shape. Same goes to its prosoma but forming it into a flat spade shape. Now let's begin with its abdomen. Let's cover it with a thin sheet of clay, closing the seam and shape it out based on the reference. And we can now add those abdominal details on its underside including the book lungs, genitalia, and the spinnerets area. The Antilles Pinto Tarantula Caribena versicolor, also known as the Martinique Red Tree Spider or the Martinique Pinto, is popular as tarantula pet because of its docile character and unique coloration. It is previously placed in the genus Avicularia and is native to Martinique in the Caribbean Sea. They are arboreal or tree-dwelling and they spin elaborate funnel webs in which they spend most of their time. Spider links of this tarantula are bright blue with black trunk pattern on the abdomen and they gradually lose these colorations as they grow, changing to more dramatic as adults. Then let's add fur texture on the top part of it. Then we're gonna add poke holes around it except for the underside using this tiny needle. Then I just cure it with heat gun. Next is sculpting its prosoma or the fused head and thorax. First I'm gonna pre-cover it with a thin sheet of clay to give it a solid base and its basic shape including its chelicerae. Then I just roughen its surface using a hard bristle brush and after this, let's cure it with heat gun. Now let's start sculpting its underside and I apply liquid polymer clay on its surface for better adhesion. And we're gonna add all its ventral details including the sternum, coxae, and the underside part of its mouth. This tarantula is an aggressive feeder and will eat a variety of insect prey including crickets, roaches, and grasshoppers. Though this tarantula is generally docile, are quite a bit more high-strung and nervous, and they seem to jump more frequently so they do not prefer being handled much. And even if they bite, it is not poisonous and is no worse than a plain bee sting. Though another defensive weapon they possess is their urticating hairs that can be somewhat irritating and can cause some itching and redness. And now we're gonna add fur texture on the underside of its mouth. Then let's brush the surface with alcohol to smooth out. And now we're done sculpting its ventral, we can now cure it with heat gun. Let us now proceed in sculpting the top side of its prosoma or the carapace. I apply liquid polymer clay on the surface as well and add this rounded sheet of clay. Press it and shape it out. Then I lay a plastic film over it and start detailing. Then I form the small hump where its eyes group together. Then I move into its chelicerae and cover them with the strips of clay and shape them out. These caribena versicolor are not social creatures. Any attempts to cohabitate will likely result to cannibalism. The female of this species can live up to about 12 years and reach a size of 5 to 6 inches, while the males have life expectancy of 3 years of age and are thinner and have long fairy legs. We can now embed these tiny pre-baked polymer balls for its eyes. Then I add a small crater underneath the glycerae for its fangs. And for texturing the surface. Then 
Next, we're gonna attach its trochanters, the joints, next to its femur. I just attach these cut small pieces of clay on the tip of each coxa with liquid polymer clay. Then, let's blend them in and shape them. Then, I add poke holes on them and on the glycerin. And after that, we can now place it in the oven to cure. Let us now connect its abdomen and prosoma together. I just trim off the excess wire of the prosoma and pull out the wire of the abdomen, then pour some glue in the hole. Then I just insert the wire of the prosoma. And now I'm gonna fill the gap of the connection with these two parts epoxy pari. Then I just shape it out to make it seamless. And after that, I set it aside to cure. Moving on, let us now make its legs and other appendages. And we're gonna use this cut and bended 1mm stainless steel wire for the legs and pedipalps. Add glue on both ends of the wire and wrap around the cotton twine on them. Then I just brush them with clear resin and set them aside to cure. And once they are completely cured, I cover the legs with a strip of clay, close the seam, and shape them out based on the reference. Then I just add segments for texture and poke holes on them. And same procedures are applied to the pedipalps. For the spinnerets, I use 0.6mm stainless steel wire which I cover with a very thin strip of clay, shaping them out and add segments. And for the fangs, I just cut a thin roll of clay into small pieces and roll them out into conical spines, then slightly curving them on top of a tie. Then I just put all the limbs and appendages in the oven to cure. And let us now paint it. First, I'm gonna prime all the parts with gray gesso. And after that, we can now paint it with a mix of maroon and little amount of black. Next, glazing them with thin down burnt amber and black. Painting the joints and the other areas with a mix of thin down burnt amber and titanium white. Then painting the underside of its mouth with titanium white, orange, and bright red. I also add the bald area of its abdomen using the same paint mix we've used on its joints. Then pre-painting the carapace with blue-green mica powder mixed with acrylic medium. And then painting the paws of its legs and pedipalps with dark green mica powder. And now the painting is done, let us now move on to the hair planting stage. Here, I'm setting up my magnifying glass stand for this process. This helps me a lot in working on minute details with less eye strain. And I'm gonna use clear resin as adhesive for the hairs, and the hairs are made out of cut synthetic bristles of a brush that I tinted with oil paints. But I find it quite difficult to take a clear view of the process through the magnifying glass, so instead I chose to film some segment of the lens so you may see me clearly what I'm doing and without altering the colors of the picture. But still, planting these tiny hairs and keeping the focus on the specific area while filming is indeed very difficult as well. But that's okay. To know that you guys enjoy my videos, that's enough to make me happy and relieved. And you know guys, planting these hairs one by one indeed a painstaking job. And you might ask me how many minutes does a single leg takes to complete. The answer is, 
hours. Depending on how hairy the tarantula species is, like for example this Antilles pink toe, it usually took me about one and a half hours to finish a single leg. Yes, you heard me right and I'm serious guys. That's why producing a single tarantula model requires me a considerable amount of time including the video editing process. And to be able for me to achieve the desired effect, this process can be done only by hand. So yes, indeed, patience is a virtue and I consider myself a very patient artist. Now that I'm done planting its red hairs, I'm gonna add fine synthetic fur on its carapace to add more fuzziness and texture. I just apply resin on the surface and stick the cut fibers on it, then set it aside to cure. Now we're gonna tint the fur with a mix of blue-green mica powder and acrylic medium. And we can now assemble it. We're gonna use super glue for the fangs and the spinnerets and clear resin for the legs and pedipalps. And I just set it aside to cure. And finally, we can now seal it with matte water-based varnish. And lastly, finishing its eyes and fangs with clear resin. And that's it, our Antilles Pinto Tarantula is finally complete. I hope you like and enjoy it, and if you did, please give this video a like, drop your comments and thoughts about it, and feel free to share it also to all our friends out there, so they may also watch it. And also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell icon to see more of my sculpting videos in the future, okay? Thank you for watching guys, see you again next time, and wherever you are, have a great day and evening everyone. Thank you.